hello everybody welcome back to the reset info channel in today's video i'm going to show you the first things to do after setup on your oppo find x9 so first what you guys want to do is connect to the wi-fi so let's open up the settings app in the settings app let's go to wi-fi and here we will have all available networks that our phone found so I'll choose this network right here. Now all we have to do is enter a password and then click save. So I'll quickly do that and I'll get back to you guys. Now let's click save. And as you guys can see, we are successfully connected to the network. So what we can do next is we can add a Google account. So we're going to do it a bit faster because the next step is to update apps via the Play Store. So we're going to open up the Play Store and set up the account from here. So let's click on sign in here. It will check the info. Now here we need to enter our email. And after entering our email, we have to enter our password. So we click next right here and then it should redirect us to the password page. Now, if your phone crashes during the setup, as you guys can see like that, this is normal and all you guys have to do is click cancel updates here go to sign in and enter the email and the password again it happens it happens to me on every single oppo device on any other android device and this is normal and you shouldn't be worried about it once you log in successfully then it should go away and you shouldn't have this problem so i'll quickly re-enter the email and the password and i'll get back to you now here after entering the password you will guys see who will be using this device and i will choose the first option but if you set up this device for your child or a teenager then you can use this option right here now let's click next and here you need to agree to the terms of service by google after that you will see the google services load up and as you guys can see now we just click no thanks and we are in the google play store so what we can do next, we can update our apps. So click on our avatar right here, go to my apps and games. And here you will have updates available. Sometimes it's 40 or 50 and sometimes it's zero. So you need to make sure that you have every single app up to date on your phone. Let's click on update all and let it upgrade in the background. And in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the screen locks. So let's open up the settings let's scroll down until we see security and privacy and as you guys can see it says that the device may be at risk because we do not have our screen lock set up let's scroll down to security section and click on device unlock click on screen lock and here you will choose the password type so you guys can use the pattern alphanumeric or numeric i always go for numeric but it's totally up to you now as you guys can see if you forget your password then you will simply lose access to the phone data and here you guys can enter the lock screen password as you guys can see it says that you need to enter six digits but you guys can go to use a different password type and here select four digits six digits four to 16 digits alphanumeric or the pattern so i always go for six digits because it increases our security and it's much harder to guess than four digits now i will use the one two three four five six password and you will see this notification right here that this password is too common and it will ask you if you want to use it anyway i will click use but you need to think of a password that nobody could guess now if you enter the password again as you guys can see your password will be set and the password is required every 72 hours so every three days or when you restart the device now we're gonna move on to face and fingerprint unlock and we're gonna start off with the fingerprint. So let's click on agree, enter the password that we just set up and click on add fingerprint. Now, as you guys can see, we need to move our finger slowly. So we can either click it or we can actually move it. And we can just do it like that. Or we can click it. And when you feel a vibration, then just let go and click again. So now our fingerprint has been added. We can try and unlock our phone using it. As you guys can see, went through. 
And now let's set up our face. So let's click on agree and enter the password. And here we need to enroll our face. So we need to click on add now and keep our face within a frame and we need to look on the for the front camera. So I'll quickly do it off camera. And as you guys can see, once the process is too long, then it will just crash because it will say that the failed to add face data. So I'll quickly do that off camera and I'll get back to you in a second. So the whole process took around five seconds. Now our face is added and we can try unlocking our phone with it. So let's do that. Now let me point the phone like that. As you guys can see, the face unlock right here unlocked it. Now I won't look at the device. And as you guys can see, it's searching for a face. Now I, once I do that, the phone is unlocked. So this is how we know that the face unlock works. Now, here we have theft protection and I don't see many people talk about it, maybe because it's still in progress and it doesn't work like we want to, but here what we can do is we can scroll down and as you guys can see here we will have the detection lock so the detection walk, lock works like that when somebody just takes your phone and then runs away when the phone speeds up it can feel it and then it will lock the screen so as you guys can see you even have an explanation here when somebody just takes your device speeds away and then your screen will lock and if your phone is not locked sorry not locked but stolen you can still unlock it using the pin code. So you guys can unlock it just like that if it's just a false alarm. Now we have set up everything. Now it's time to set up the Google Wallet. So as you guys can see, every single app has updated on our device. Now let's type in google wallet right here so once you see google pay you can click it and make sure to ignore the sponsored apps right here here we have the google wallet and sometimes it comes pre-installed but sometimes it doesn't so i reset this phone once there was no google wallet but this time you have the google wallet so it's totally 50 50 now it will choose an account to use the wallet with and we can click on view wallet, allow the Google wallet to send the notifications. And right here we have the passes, the loyalty programs, everything. So it's also region dependent. So if you don't have some shops or source like me, then you're fine. It's all about the region you're in. So let's click on the plus icon here. And here we can add the payment card, transit pass, loyalty card, gift card, or anything else like our gym membership or a ticket. So here we have the payment card. Here we have the cards that we use on our Google account or whatever we actually use them. Like as you guys can see, Google Pay, Chrome, or YouTube. Now let's click on new credit or debit card. And we will see the fields that we need to set. But we can click on the card number and click on scan card. Now we need to line it up with the frame and the front camera will take care of it. So now we can enter the details manually. We can do something like that for an example. And even though it's invalid, let me delete this one. Then you can just type whatever you want. Make sure that there are there you see your card details you can click save and continue and then you will see your card you will be able to pay with it and that's basically how it works so what you guys can do next is check the battery settings because this is very important to check it right from the scratch right from the start of using your phone let's go to settings and then battery here we have three modes. Now the balanced mode is the mode that we're going to use all the time. The power saving mode we're going to use it once our phone hits the certain percentage on our battery. And high performance mode if you're gaming on the device then you guys can use it. And as you guys can see there's a difference like one hour. A bit more than one hour between balanced mode and high performance mode. So why not change it to high performance mode all the time. And the question is actually easy to answer. 
because whenever you use high performance mode your phone can heat up faster much faster than usual and of course this is not exactly how many hours you still get with the battery because it all varies on what you are doing on the device and those stats are almost never the truth so i don't think this phone can last one day one hour and nine minutes because once you open let's say youtube instagram or anything else then it will drain your battery much faster that's why we use the balance mode and not the high performance mode all the time here we also have the superpower saving mode so it saves your battery even more than the normal power saving mode because in super power saving mode you are actually limited to six apps only and in power saving mode you can use any single app but your phone will just be in a mode where the cpu slows down the refresh rate drops and everything else just happens and you just don't see it but your phone is making performance tweaks to make sure that it can survive longer so now here we have the battery usage as you guys can see it has no data and we basically cannot check it because we have set up our phone but here we can see how many minutes we've been on the screen or screen off but it was active here we have the system launcher and here you guys can see the battery usage by app but we only have one app here because this phone is fresh so let's open the power saving settings and the first one is automatically exit power saving mode. So whenever your phone is charged up to 50% or fully charged, then it will change the power saving mode to the balanced mode. Now, here we have the function that we need to turn on. So automatically enter power saving mode. And your phone will automatically enter the power saving mode once the battery reaches a certain percentage. So for an example, 5 to 45. And I always set it at 25 because a lot of phones have it at 20 but i feel like you need those five percent and i'll explain it later here we have auto dark mode so you guys can actually extend your battery lifespan with the dark mode because of the screen now here we also have the video battery saver i recommend you guys to enable it of course if your phone feels that you're draining battery with a video then it will try and reduce the quality and reduce the audio quality just to save the battery so now here we have app battery management here we can set up apps like allowing or restricting background activity you guys can have fun with it because you guys can set up those apps for you like restrict background activity and for instagram we want to restrict it too now for an app let's say spotify we want to allow background activity since it's a music player and you guys can have fun by setting it up to your preference so let's leave the power saving settings here we have the battery health now the maximum capacity is how many percent of battery actually is behind our back and as you guys can see it's 100 percent for me because this phone is fresh but once it hits let's say 80 or 70 then this battery will definitely would need to be replaced now here we have the smart charging basically to extend your battery lifespan your device will learn from your patterns how you charge it and it will automatically have 100 percent until you need to use it so for an example you wake up at 6 a.m but you sleep from 12 a.m so it's six hours of sleep your phone will definitely charge to 100 percent but it will do it in a smart way like it would charge to 80 percent normally and then it will slow down to 100 percent so once you wake up you will hit 100 percent on 5:59 or 6 a.m so you guys can also set up custom charging limit but smart charging won't work with it as you guys can see you can choose one and here you can set a charging limit so for an example now i'm on 80 percent so I can only charge up to 80%. So now I'm at 83 and once I'm on 79, I won't be able to go back to more than 80. So it's totally up to you guys how you set it up. I always recommend using smart charging, but if you really want to expand your lifespan and don't mind the 20% that you won't ever use, then I would recommend going for a custom charging limit. Now, here we have the charging settings. Here, 
I recommend you guys enabling smart rapid charging. Your phone can actually uh, heat up, but it's normal because you're using a faster charger. And as you guys can see, it even says that the device may get warmer during charging and it's normal, so you should guys ignore it. Here we have the wireless charging tutorial. So you guys can align the lightning bolt icon with the center of the charger and you will be able to charge your phone wirelessly. Here we have the quiet charging, so the wireless charger runs at low power level to minimize noise. You guys can disable it and then you will have a faster charging wirelessly. And reverse wireless charging, basically you can charge something with this phone right here. So I'll take my phone for an example, let me place the Oppo really like that. And here as you guys can see we have an iPhone. Now once I place it like that. Our iPhone is charging and it's all because of the Oppo Find X9. Now, what you guys can do is, let me show it to you, disable it when battery is lower than a set value. So, for an example, we can disable it when our battery hits, let's say, 80%. So now I'm on 83 and once I hit 80, then reverse wireless charging will disable. Now, what you guys can do is leave the charging settings and as you guys can see, we can show battery level in status bar. So it's not in here and now we can just click on it. It will be in the status bar. So you guys can change the battery percentage outside icon, do not show. And once you click do not show, you won't even see it in the control center. So I recommend you guys enabling it inside battery or outside battery icon. Now, here you guys can also change the battery style like vertical, loop, or just do not show and you will only see the percentage. So, that's it for the battery. Now, what we can do as a last resort is check for any software updates that our phone may have because it's a fresh phone and we never know. So, scroll down to system and update. Now, after you're here, you guys can go to software update and it will check for updates automatically. As you guys can see, I run the latest version, but if you don't, then I recommend you guys updating it. It's very important. And that's it for the video. So, I hope it was helpful. If it was, don't leave a like, subscription, and a comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.